down four. That's a situation that we we harp on a lot, and it's um, it's just a whole lot of fun and the the emotion to be able to persevere through that, man. It's like a, a ticking time bomb, man. Once you get in the end zone, man, you just explode. Do that. You just fire that ball, right? Yeah. Sorry the- if I hit somebody. I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of accuracy with this thing. That's why I moved the tight end. Sorry about that. We have Darius Butler and Joe Hayden on the show to talk defense, but it was all about the offense and Travis Kelsey last night, and that's the, about the only thing the Chiefs had to apologize for as we hear Kelsey there postgame. They went into SoFi and pulled off a thrilling 30-27 to comeback win over the Chargers. Chargers Chiefs here for it. Whenever it's on, give me it. Monday night, Thursday night with Andrew Ritworth. And I'm here signing up for that matchup any day of the week with Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes under center. How about these Travis Kelsey three touchdowns? Oh my goodness. I mean, if you're playing fantasy, it's, it's done. Uh, it took Kansas City just one minute and 15 seconds on just five plays to go 75 yards for this game winning score. So the Chiefs, they're now eight and two. The Chiefs are now sitting atop the AFC alone, planting that flag, ready to eat that turkey on Thursday when everybody else is duking it out to kick off week 12. So, by the way, the the impressiveness of this feat without a juju, without Hardman, without Kadarius. I mean, Kadarius Tony, he pops out of this game with a hamstring injury. Mahomes still threw for 329 yards, still had three touchdowns, and it wasn't just Kelsey. He was looking at and hitting Sky Moore, Justin Watson. Shout out Jody Fortson. I mean, doing it. He was spreading the ball around. He was making it work that Mahomes. I said on Friday that this campaign, all of everything that Mahomes is doing, has the makings of a signature MVP moment with all of the injuries, with some adversity, without Tyreek Hill, and the man continues to deliver. So the race for MVP certainly isn't over. You got Jalen Hurts, you got Tua, they're still right there in the conversation. But what we saw collectively in primetime matters when it comes to these awards, it just does. It was special under the bright lights at SoFi last night. And now the Chargers, who play at SoFi, they're still playing better than the Rams, (laughs) sorry, Um, they fall outside the playoff picture. They're, even Steven, right, they're at 500, 5 and 5. They did show me something last night, too, though. Marissa and I were talking, we're like, Herbert deserves a win, we just want to win for him. And uh, it was nice to see him finally look a little healthy out there, and you saw how much better this offense looks, even when Keenan Allen is, is, is even just even just him healthy. Him back on the field is, is a game changer. So I still expect um, a run to the playoffs <laughs> out of these bolts, uh, as lightning probably just struck my studio somehow here. I want to hear from you guys. Let me know, at Up and Adam Show. Great weekend, great football, uh, and it wasn't the only exciting finish that we got yesterday. So let's do it. Let's get into the big takeaways from earlier action on Sunday. Patriots! Ugh, woof, 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 this game. The Patriots beat the Jets 10-3. It was the sleepiest game of the year until this. That means, I mean, 17 punts, no offensive touchdowns. But this highlight was awesome. It's Marcus Jones, it's 84 yards, it's a punt return touchdown. Guess how much to go? Five seconds to go in this thing. A dramatic win for the Patriots. Uh, And it made it abundantly clear that New England is a factor in the AFC playoff race. Tell me if you've heard that before for the past 20 years or so. The Pats have won three straight from three and four a month ago to six and four. Now they shoot up to six in the position seating uh, and they're in prime position to to make the playoffs. And I'm. I kind of think it might happen again somehow crazily. I, and I have to address our guy, LaShawn McCoy, came on the show last week uh, to call Belichick's greatness into question. He didn't come on to do that, but that it happened while he was on. And, uh, you know, he said that the, what the Patriots accomplished said far more about Tom Brady. And he tweeted this, so he's doubling down, saying, why I'll overreact when I said without Tom Brady, Bills look like the... Oh, I forget what the rest of the tweet is, but he's... <laughs> okay. He's doubling down on the fact that that it's more about Brady, that Belichick, the, you know, it's about defense. He's not an offensive-minded coach, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, and, yes, and it wasn't the sharpest day, and I love LaShawn for, for doubling down like that, and he's awesome. Um, and, and LaShawn and, and everybody can say what they want about the offense, but I think it makes what Bill Belichick is doing with this team even more impressive. They don't have a top-tier quarterback. They're put, you know, they've got quarterback drama. They don't have – any top-tier playmakers on offense. And, yes, that does go back to some decisions that he certainly is involved in, as he's involved in every minor decision made in that building. But I I don't know. If you put up their offensive weapons against anyone in the league, I 
I don't know. It's, it, it's not great. Like, there's about two or three teams maybe that you would take them over. They're they're pretty much bottom of the barrel. So, objectively, they have to be bottom five from a sheer talent perspective, unfortunately. But somehow, they're manufacturing wins. And what matters more? Nothing. They held the Jets' offense to two total yards in the second half. Like, the nightmare scenario for Zach Wilson. The night, like the the rent. What are we, are we still saying? Space in your head, rent free. Are we still? Is that cool still? Is it? Marissa says yes. So it is. Uh, awful, awful. They have the number two defense in the league right now, after letting their best player, all pro corner J.C. Jackson, walk in free agency. I saw Mina Kimes tweet about this. That somehow they have the second best best pass defense, and they do not have a stud. They did not go draft a stud corner. They didn't do any of that. Uh, they created that score on special teams. On a given day, if one phase isn't great, Belichick is the guy that's finding a way to, w- to make it happen and play, and that's what great coaching is. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not about debating Shady, but I know that, I know, you know, I'm, I, I would love to have Shady come on and talk about this, but, um, more than anything, I think what Belichick's done over this last year and a half with what has been average quarterback play at best only makes his case as one of the greatest head coaches of all time even stronger and he wasn't the only one that made a statement guys uh let's get into it the dallas cowboys oh my gosh they went into minnesota and demolished the previously eight and one vikings 40 to three i was hanging out with my parents we were outside grilling i kept coming in like what is going on in this game even in the stunning loss to the packers last week there were a lot of positives for dallas to take away as you could see signs of what this offense was maybe finally going in through and coming together and cd lamb looked so good um and it did it, it, it i don't know yesterday afternoon it gelled even more and the big breakout star to talk about what is happening here today? I'm scared. Um, I'm if, if I'm the NFC East and the NFC, I'm scared of Tony Pollard because he is a legitimate star. So here's what he did. 80 yards on the ground. 109 through the air, including that, you know, I mean, come on. Including that. Two touchdowns. Look what he's done over the past month, if we can pop up this full screen. Since week eight, he's averaged 154.7 scrimmage yards per game, 7.6 yards per touch, while scoring six touchdowns, all lead the entire league over that span. Now, under the entirety of the Jerry Jones era, the Cowboys have been at their best, you guys, with what? A strong offensive line of a leaded cheese block out there that nobody can get through, and a star running back. Zeke had been that guy. But he hasn't been that guy, unfortunately, for a few years. The Cowboys haven't had a legitimate threat as a result. And and I think Jerry Jones was almost trying to force something to happen with Zeke that was no longer happening. A big paycheck to him, a lot of endearment for his player. And and they didn't have a, a, a consistent threat as a result. Tony Pollard wasn't pushed and championed in that way. But if he keeps playing like that, and Parsons keep play, keeps playing the way he has been playing. And and then we're going to throw an Odell Beckham into this mix if they get that kind of a signing. With the way the NFC looks right now, why not the Cowboys to represent the NFC in the Super Bowl? And I think LaShawn McCoy would come on and say Dak Prescott, which is an interesting answer. And, why, you know, something that we're going to have to keep our eye on and talk about uh, as the season unfolds. But, Marissa, cover your ears. The Eagles don't look... Quite, uh, I slept the, they, they don't look like quite as scary, do they? Like, scary, but we're getting there. We're, but we're getting there. Uh, 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 yeah, you saw what they did to the Vikings, okay? The Cowboys look as good as anyone in that conference right now. Not saying they're going to win it. I think the Eagles will. But it's, it's time to stop dismissing them for the low-hanging fruit. But the valid points, I, mean, I don't know if we can say to stop dismissing them because... Mike McCarthy makes crazy in-game decisions, and that's why we see him throwing his headset. Uh, and and Dak, I think, I guess, does have something to prove. But I'm excited to see what they've got down the stretch. 40-3 to in Minnesota's building is no joke and no chains for Kirk Cousins. And I don't think every – I think there's no Kirk Cousins is falling down to earth take on this or, like, he's going to Kirk Cousins and that's going to – it is not that, like, the Cowboys are dominant and they're gelling at the right time. And Tony Pollard and Parsons are two studs leading the way. And Dak can do his thing.